Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Kelly Roberts, and I chose the Pentecostals for this week's research. I was raised in a non-denominational Protestant home. The Pentecostals are really uh, a outbreak of, I think, the evangelical and presentist movements of the 19th century, kind of their ideological ancestors, if you will. And because they believe in holiness on earth is, is a way to salvation, uh, really breaking from this idea for the wages of sin is death. The Pentecostals are a religion of, of, lower, of the lower class, unlike the Anglican and Catholic churches that are really cater to the middle and upper classes with their pomp and circumstance. The Pentecostal church is a very simple doctrine and it's very inclusive to developing nations and, and people who have been enslaved or impoverished. Uh, really, one of the main ways that they break from uh, their Christian sects is in the ideas of the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are pretty much common to most Christian um, denominations, and that is the Holy Spirit coming and saving your soul and filling your soul. And it's a more of an abstract, ethereal concept where the gifts of the spirit are really fundamental tenets of Pentecostalism. And that is the physical manifestation of your spirituality and your salvation, which is speaking in tongues, healing the sick, very charismatic. And uh, one of the authors that I uh, consulted for this research was Garnet Roper. And he wrote Impact of Evangelical and Pentecostal Religion. And essentially a conclusion he comes to is because it is a simple religion, its ideology really lacks contextual relevance. And they've had problems with racism. They've had problems with uh, the poor classes really going back to vice and and having multiple partners out of marriage. And it's it creates more of an informal structure of Christianity as far as those human needs and human desires are concerned. And because there is just not this really strict doctrine there. Um, so that's essentially what he argued. Uh, building on his research, I read The Economic Consequences of Pentecostal Belief by Robert Woodbury. And he argues that Pentecostalism is one of the most growing sects of, of Christianity in the entire world, but importantly, in uh, developing countries. There's a lot of research concerning the United States and there's an argument that religion, especially Protestant religion, uplifts economies and it also creates um, a moral fiber for a country, which I believe we are really kind of seeing as we go through the course of this class in the United States. But interestingly, he targets mostly Latin America, India, uh, uh, Africa, these developing nations. And he, he asserts that Pentecostalism uplifts them. Essentially, although there's not a lot of data on it, um, there's less corruption, there's more attention to your health because your body is a spiritual temple, and there's less crime, there's more likely for marriages to be maintained and the father and mother to stay together, more fam familial stability there. However, there are some discontents in the Pente Pentecostal religion, and one of that those is that the Pentecostal church in the United States promoted segregation in their church. And the final article that I consulted is um, by Lee, J. Lee Grady, and it's the Pentecostals Renounce Racism. In 1994 in Memphis, different factions of white and black African-American Pentecostal churches um, met to try to come together and, and really um, form a, a whole unit uh, that doesn't have any problems with race. Essentially, the, the tenets of Pentecostalism is that it's a religion for people of the soil. Um, it is for the poor. It is for the people who are feel powerless and need to be empowered. And essentially, the argument in Sun is that it, it, it helps these individuals become politically active, culturally um, and culturally relevant.